Looks like someone's been doing their homework. A whole stack of resources on cybersecurity frameworks. NIST, ISO 27001, CIS controls, even some COVID in the mix. Ready to build that digital fortress, huh? More like gathering the blueprints and tools, right? And hey, you've come to the right place. We'll break it all down, make it make sense. Because let's be honest, just seeing ISO 27001 on a page can make anyone feel like they need a crash course in, well, cybersecurity boot camp. I hear you. It can seem overwhelming, that's for sure. But that's exactly why frameworks exist, you know? They're like maps through the cybersecurity wilderness. Each one might take a different route, but they all lead to the same destination, a safer, more secure organization. So less about becoming some kind of tech wizard, more about choosing the right path for what you actually need. Precisely. It's like picking a hiking trail. You've got to think about the terrain, the difficulty level, what you want to get out of the journey itself. Okay, I'm all about a good journey analogy. So where do we begin our cybersecurity trick? Hmm. Let's start with something straightforward, something actionable, especially if you're just starting to explore this world. CIS controls. CIS controls. Okay, that rings a bell. Give me the lowdown. Picture this. A prioritized checklist. 18 essential security actions. They're grouped by impact level, basic, foundational, and organizational. CIS controls are all about taking those fundamental steps, protecting against the most common cyber attacks. Cybersecurity checklist. I like it. So what kind of stuff are we talking about here? Give me an example or two. Well, for starters, think about inventorying your hardware and software. Knowing what you have is the first step to protecting it right. Then there's vulnerability management, staying ahead of those pesky software weaknesses. And you absolutely can't forget about controlling those all-powerful admin privileges. So CIS controls, it's kind of like the cybersecurity equivalent of locking your doors and windows. Simple, but hey, it works. Exactly. Your security foundation. Now, if CIS controls are the solid ground, NIST CSF, that's where things get a bit more ar architectural, you could say. NIST CSF. Yeah, our listener dug up some info on this one. It came about after an executive order. That's a pretty serious origin story. No kidding. It was developed by the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST CSF. It was designed for organizations of all sizes, but especially those considered critical to national infrastructure. So like power grids, financial systems, that kind of thing. You got it. The ones with a big target on their backs, they needed a common language for cybersecurity. And that's what NIST CSF provides. So is it just for the big players then? Not at all. But it's definitely essential for those with a lot at stake. NIST CSF, it's built around five core functions identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. So it's not just about building walls. You know, it's also about having a plan for when, let's face it, when someone tries to break through. Right. Not if, but when. So it's not just about preventing attacks. It's about being prepared to handle them when they happen. Absolutely. And this CSF gives you that comprehensive framework, helps you do just that. Now let's switch gears for a minute, talk about a framework with a global passport. ISO 27001. ISO 27001. This one sounds like it belongs in a boardroom somewhere. What makes it so special? Well, ISO 27001, it's like the gold standard for information security management. It's recognized internationally for building what's called an ISMS, or Information Security Management System. An ISMS, huh? Adding that to my cybersecurity vocabulary. Good call. Think of ISO 27001 as a holistic approach. It's all about managing sensitive information, covers everything from risk assessment and access control to even physical security and incident management. Okay, so comprehensive for sure. Our listener is particularly interested in GDPR compliance, though, and I see some overlap in their research. How does ISO 27001 fit into that whole puzzle? Great question. And it highlights a key strength of ISO 27001. It goes way beyond just technical controls. What's really unique is its scope. You know, it forces you to think about security from every angle, from the physical security to even employee training. And that's huge GE for GDPR compliance. So in a way, by implementing ISO 27001, you're already laying the groundwork for GDPR. Exactly. You're already ticking a lot of those GDPR boxes just by getting started with ISO 27001. But we'll dive deeper into that connection a little bit later. Okay. Color me intrigued. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we've got one more acronym to tackle here. COBIT. And honestly, it sounds a little intimidating. Ah, don't let the name throw you off. COBIT, it stands for Control Objectives for Information and Related Technologies. It's all about bridging that gap between, you know, IT and your actual business goals. So less about firewalls and more about making sure your tech investments actually make sense for your business. I can definitely see why you included this one. Exactly. COBIT provides this common language, 
a set of best practices for governing and managing your whole IT environment. And it's built on five key principles, which are meeting stakeholder needs, covering the enterprise end-to-end, applying a single integrated framework, enabling a holistic approach, and separating governance from management. Five principles to make sure your tech plays nicely with your business objectives. I'm starting to think we could do a whole separate deep dive on COVID. Maybe we will. (laughs) But for now, the key takeaway is this. COVID helps you answer that critical question. Is our technology actually supporting our business goals? Are we getting what we need out of it? All right. We have covered a lot of ground here. CIS controls, NIST, CSF, ISO 27301, even COBIT. It's like a cybersecurity alphabet soup. Mm -hmm. But in all seriousness, this is a lot to digest. What are the key things our listeners should be thinking about when it comes to navigating this world of frameworks? It's where the rubber meets the road. And it's the perfect segue into our next section. See, choosing the right framework, it's not about finding the best one. It's about finding the one that best fits your organization, its needs, its goals. So like you wouldn't use a hammer to tighten a screw, right? You need the right tool for the job. Exactly. And just like a well-stocked toolbox, having options is key. But how do you know which framework to grab first? Well, it all starts with asking the right questions about your organization. All right. I'm all ears. Hit me with these crucial questions. Okay. First up. Think about your organization's size and its industry. A small startup is going to have different needs, different resources than, say, a global corporation, right? That makes sense. I mean, a one-person shop, they probably don't need the same level of security as a bank or something. Exactly. And a hospital, way different security concerns than a retail store. So understanding your organization's context, that's crucial right off the bat. Context is key. What else should we be thinking about here? Regulatory requirements. Those are huge. Depending on your industry, your location, you might actually be legally obligated to comply with certain regulations, like our listener mentioned GDPR or EPA for healthcare. Right. And those come with some pretty serious security requirements. Speaking of GDPR, we were going to circle back to that connection with ISO 27001. Absolutely. Remember we talked about ISO 27001 being so holistic in its approach? Well, that lines up perfectly with GDPR and its emphasis on data protection. Think about it. ISO 27001 requires you to implement things like data encryption, strict access controls, instant response procedures. Those are all essential for GDPR compliance, too. So by implementing ISO 27001, you're basically already well on your way to meeting those GDPR requirements. Two birds, one stone kind of thing. You could say that. But you got to remember, GDPR, it gets pretty specific. It requires things like, you know, getting explicit consent for data processing, respecting data subject rights. That goes a little beyond the original scope of ISO 27001. So ISO 27001, it's a fantastic foundation, but you might need some extra measures to be fully GDPR compliant in the end. Exactly. It's like building a house. ISO 27001 gives you that strong, solid structure, but you might want to add some extra features, you know, make it your own. Ooh, I like that analogy. What about the other frameworks, though? Where does something like NIST CSF fit into this whole compliance puzzle? NIST CSF, that's an interesting one. It's very risk-based, very adaptable. It's not going to tell you exactly what to do step by step, but it helps you figure out what's important for your organization. And then you build your security program around that. This flexibility can be really valuable for meeting compliance requirements. It lets you tailor your controls to the specific regulations you've got to follow. So even though it's not as prescriptive as something like ISO 12001, NIST CSF can still be a really powerful tool for achieving compliance. Absolutely. It's all about understanding the strengths of each framework, figuring out how they align with what you need. Now, beyond just size, industry, and regulations, there's another crucial factor to consider. Your organization's security maturity level. Security maturity level? Is that like a cybersecurity report card or something? Kind of, yeah. It's about honestly assessing where you're at on your cybersecurity journey. You know, are you just starting out? Or do you have well-established processes, controls already in place? So like a small startup with no dedicated IT staff, they'd probably be at a different maturity level than, say, a Fortune 500 company with a whole cybersecurity department. Exactly. And that maturity level, it plays a huge GE role in determining which framework is the best fit. You don't want to bite off more than you can chew, right? Starting with something like CIS controls, that could be a great way to build that strong foundation and then gradually level up your security posture over time. It's like learning to walk before you can run. Got to get those basic down first. Exactly. And speaking of resources, that's another critical thing to consider. Your budget, 
your personnel, the expertise you have available. Right, because implementing these frameworks, it takes time, it takes money, it takes people. Absolutely. And that's definitely something to consider when you're evaluating your options. A super robust framework like ISO 27001, that might require a pretty significant investment up front. Whereas, like we said, something like CIS controls, that could be a much more manageable starting point, especially for organizations with fewer resources. It's about finding that balance, right, between mm. shooting for the stars and what you can realistically handle right now. You've given our listener a lot to think about when it comes to choosing the right framework. But let's be real, actually implementing it, that's a whole other challenge. Where do you even start? That's where it gets real, for sure. Mm -hmm. And often it comes down to having the right tools and technologies in place. Can't build a house without a hammer, right? Okay. So beyond the framework itself, you need the right gear to make it all work. Exactly. It's like this. You wouldn't climb Mount Everest in flip-flops, would you? You need the right equipment. Cybersecurity is the same way. You need the right security software, tools for monitoring, responding to threats, systems for managing your data so it's actually secure. Got to equip yourself for that cybersecurity climb. Precisely. But here's the thing. Even with all the best gear in the world, the most common point of failure, human error, gets us every time. Oh, tell me about it. Accidentally clicking a phishing link, forgetting to update a password, been there, done that. Exactly. And that's why, beyond the tools, beyond the fancy tech, investing in your people, absolutely crucial. So security awareness training, that's not just checking a box. It's a critical piece of the whole thing. It's everything. You've got to create a culture of security in your organization. That means educating your employees about the risks, giving them the knowledge to spot those threats, and then empowering them to actually speak up if something seems off. So you're turning your employees from potential vulnerabilities into, like, the first line of defense. Couldn't have said it better myself. Now, let's say you've chosen a framework. You've got the tools. Your employees are practically cyber ninjas. You're done, right? Time to relax. Wait, there's more. I was hoping for a celebratory cybersecurity nap at this point. Not so fast. You see, the digital world, it never sits still. New threats are popping up every single day, which means your cybersecurity strategy, it has to be just as adaptable, always evolving. So it's not a set it and forget it kind of deal. It's not a chance. It's all about continuous improvement, regularly reviewing those risk assessments, updating your controls, your processes, even being open to adjusting your whole framework if it's not cutting it anymore. So agility, flexibility, that's key in this ever-changing world. It really is. It's almost like, you know, trying to stay ahead of the cybersecurity weather forecast. Mm -hmm. You've got to be prepared for those storms, no matter what gets thrown your way. This has been quite a journey. We've unpacked the basics of these cybersecurity frameworks, figured out how to choose the right one, even how to actually implement it effectively. But as we wrap up here, what's the key takeaway you want our listener to walk away with today? That's easy. Cybersecurity, it's not about achieving this perfect protection. That's a myth. It's really about managing risk, making smart decisions, and always, always striving to improve your security posture. It's a journey, not a destination, that's for sure. Well said. And on that note, here's something for our listeners to ponder as they navigate this very complex world of cybersecurity. In an age where technology is constantly evolving at warp speed, how can we make cybersecurity less of a burden and more of an enabler? Something to think about as you continue your own cybersecurity journey. Until next time, stay curious and stay secure.